Hello viewers and welcome to the part 1 of the lecture series. Today we will be learning about an interesting topic called Static Timing Analysis or sometimes it is referred to as STA. STA is a very important topic especially for those students cracking interviews or internships or, pre or attending placements for the digital profile in VLSI domain. It is also one of the favorite questions of the interviewers. But don't worry, it becomes a very simple concept if you go deeper and understand from the basics. Let us start. So these are the contents. Uh, that we'll be learning in this series. First, we'll introduce what are setup and hold times to you, and then we'll understand the reason behind the existence of these times inside every logic circuit. For that, we'll have to study the internal structure, and then we'll answer this question, why can't we neglect these times? And then regarding the nature of the hold time, can it be negative? Next, maximum clock frequency of operation, setup analysis, hold analysis, and follow up a few problems on setup and hold time violations, and then we'll understand what is meant by critical critical path delay. We learn this topic by finding the answers for these three main questions: what, why, and how. What, what do you actually mean by setup and hold times? What significance do they carry in the logic digital logic circuits? And what are the differences between them in order to distinguish them? Distinguish between them. Why? Why do these times exist in every single logic circuit? Why can't we just neglect them? Um, can we neglect them? We'll answer this later. How? How to perform setup analysis and hold analysis. Now, this is one of the important steps uh, while doing the design. It is very necessary for the designer to ensure that the uh, to ensure that the circuit he designed works properly without any timing violation. For that, these two analyses are very important. Next, critical path delay and few problems on it. Introduction to the setup and hold times. Let us start with the basic working of a simple D flip-flop. What is a flip-flop? A flip-flop is a fundamental block in the sequential circuit that has two stable states, 0 and 1, or logic 0, logic low, and logic high, and it can store one bit binary data. This is how a D flip-flop looks like. It has one data input, a clock input pulse, and a Q and Q bar as the outputs. The function of a D flip-flop is to operate only at the positive edge transition or negative edge transition of a clock. See, this is the example of the positive edge transition of the clock. And that means the D flop is completely insensitive to any input changes in the D input, except only except uh, at the positive edge trigger of the clock. As you can see in the timing diagram, at every positive edge of the clock, the D flop simply copies the D input onto the output and maintains or holds the value until the next active edge of the clock occurs. And this process continues. So now it is very simple uh, for us to form the equation or expression for the next state. That is Qn plus 1. See, this is the present state. So next state will be denoted with the help of Qn plus 1. And that will be equal to the data present at the previous clock. Nothing but D. So Qn plus 1 is equal to D. So again, there are two types of D flop. We have positive edge ticker and negative edge ticker based on the nature of the flock. But wait a second. We'll analyze with the help of timing diagram. This is an illustration of a timing diagram of a positive edge uh, D flip flop. As you can see, uh, let us consider the D input to be stable at logic one for certain time. Okay. Now at every positive edge of the clock, the output also becomes one and maintains its value until the next active edge occurs. If the D flop is if the D input falls to zero, the output also falls to zero at the next active edge of the clock. Okay, everything is fine till then. But what if you encounter a situation where both the D input and the clock transition happen at the same time? This is where the condition arises. The output becomes uncertain. We cannot predict the value of the output with 100% certainty. Now this is where the condition or the concept of setup and hold time comes into picture. So before moving forward, let us uh, understand the basic definitions of setup and hold time. Setup time. Setup time is defined as a minimum amount of time the data input D has to remain stable before the active edge of the clock occurs. This is necessary to ensure that the data is successfully latched into the device. Hold time. Hold time is defined as a minimum amount of time the data input D must remain stable after the clock edge, after the active edge of the clock occurs. And this is important to ensure that the captured data is properly uh, maintained and not corrupted. Okay, let us understand this with the help of a diagram. 
see the d input q clock q and clock so this d data input needs to be stable at least for this time before they activate the clock which is known as t setup or esu the data input needs to be stable even after the activity of the clock occurs for this for this time this time is referred to as whole time and denoted by th let us visualize this with the help of this diagram so this is the activity of the clock uh, now these are the possible uh, ways of d input variations and these are defined these are setup time and whole time which are defined for a given circuit now the d input can change anywhere in this shaded region there is no problem but the d input needs to be stable or, or it it should be unchanged in this particular window called setup hold window if the d input if the d input changes in the non shaded region before the active of the clock then it is referred to as setup violation if the d input changes in this uh, in the non shaded region after the active of the clock it is known as hold violation so if any of these two conditions okay if any of these two violations occur it is said it is said to be have timing violation due to any reason if the data changes in the in this window it is said to have timing violation so in any of these cases we uh, cannot predict the value of the output and the value of the output reaches a special state called meta stable state or meta stability okay so as i was saying if any of these violations occur in the setup hold window we cannot say the value of output with certainty and the and the output lies somewhere between the logical 0 and 1 see as we already discussed so flip flop has two uh, two stable states 0 and 1 so uh, since these are stable the energy is zero the energy is minimum but this meta stable state lies somewhere in between them it is highly unstable therefore the energy is highest it has high energy state it is also known that this meta stable state uh, due to presence of noise within the chip the meta stable uh, state gets disturbed and eventually gets resolved to either 0 or 1 but it happens after uncertain time so they so still there is uncertainty okay so till now we have uh, understood what uh, setup and hold time violations with respect to a flip flop now we'll see this with respect to a system let us consider an example of a sequential system as follows so this sequential system uh, consists of a d flip flop and few combination logic it has two inputs d in and c in and an output out so let the delay between d in of the system and the d input of the flip flop be denoted with td and let the delay between c in and c input of the flip flop be denoted by tc so there are two possible cases for these uh, tc and td first case td greater than tc which leads to setup violation tc greater than tc which leads to hold violation which might lead to setup violation first case td equal to 3 nanoseconds and tc is equals to 2 nanoseconds this is the timing diagram uh, let us apply the scene at t equal to 0 let the scene be applied at t equal to 0 Now it takes TC, TC time. That is, it takes two nanoseconds to get reflected at the C input of the flip flop. See, now it is here. Now, in order to meet the setup violation, setup time requirement, this data input needs to be stable at least for one second, or at least for one nanosecond. See, we have assumed that the setup and hold times to be one nanoseconds. Let us say that the in of the system is applied somewhere here. or it is stable for this time now it takes 3 nanoseconds to get reflected at the d input of flip flop now it clearly shows that it violates the setup time requirements the distance or the delay uh, between this this d and c is not 1 nanosecond it is less than 1 nanosecond so therefore it is setup violation to avoid this the data input d needs to be stable at least for this time at least for this time before the prior to the active of the flop for this to happen the d in of the system needs to stable at least for this time okay so this gives you the time setup time with respect to system you know to bet tss the derivation is pretty simple okay we'll uh, see this from the start see since c in c in is applied at t equal to 0 let's start from here 0 plus it takes tc time 
to get reflected as input so tc so always remember if you move, move in this direction it is positive if it in if you move in this direction it is negative so 0 plus tc and then setup time is in this direction with respect to c so minus tsu and then td is a delay between t in and d with respect to d in this direction so minus td now this will give you the location of d in with respect to c in that is in this direction so minus tss so on the rearranging we get tss is equals to minus td td minus tc plus tsu on substituting the values we get t minus 3 minus 2 plus 1 equal to 2 nanoseconds setup time with respect to the system S2. TD is equals to 2 nanoseconds and TC is equals to 3 nanoseconds. That is TD less than TC case. <laughs> this is the timing diagram. Similar to the previous case, CAC is applied at t equal to 0, and that is the start of simulation. Now it takes 3 seconds, 3 nanoseconds for it to get reflected at the C input of the flip flop. In order to meet the whole time requirements, the data input D needs to be stable for, uh, till 1 second, till 1 nanosecond after the activity of the clock. Let us, uh, let, let us say the D in uh, that is to be captured changes at this point after somewhere after 1 nanosecond, 1 nanosecond. So it takes 2 nanoseconds to get reflected at the D input. Now it clearly shows that it violates the whole time condition. See the distance, the delay is not 1 nanosecond, it is less than 1 nanosecond. Therefore, hold violation. To avoid this, the D input, the D needs to be stable at least for this time, at least for this time after the C. So for this to happen, the D in of the system needs to be stable at least for this time. After this, it can change. There is no problem. So for this time, it has to be stable. Therefore, this will give you the uh, whole time with respect to the system, THD. So again, the derivation is simple. We'll see you from the start. So you see, it is applied to 0. So 0. And in this direction, it is positive. In this direction, it is negative. So plus TC. And again, the whole time with respect to c in this direction so plus dht and the delay time uh, between d in and d is d td in this direction in opposite direction so minus td now this will give you the location of d in with respect to c in in this positive direction only so plus th ths ths will be tc minus td plus dht on substituting the values we get 3 minus 2 plus 1 that is 2 nanoseconds whole time with respect to the system now we'll continue the lecture series in the part 2. I hope it is clear till now. Uh, if you have any doubts, please drop it down in the comment section. Thank you for listening.